Yeah. Wake up. Get it up. And there it is. What's up? up? We're live. Hopefully, Jer Jeremy and Peter will join us. Jamie, I'm already here. Cha. See? Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for the help there. How are things for. going? It's been weeks. Yeah, it has. Um, busy. Conference season is fully upon us. It is, man. This is a crazy time of year. It's like the October time. Lots going on. Got to get ready for next week in Portland and then in a couple weeks up in Seattle. So, yeah. So. Last time I saw you was in Boise. In Boise at IETA. That was kind of fun. I, I enjoyed That's that. Really Small fun. little thing. I would like to see kind of how that evolves and where it goes. Yeah, I think um, from talking to a few folks that there's, um, they're, they're looking at doing some more, some more with it next year or the year after. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, there's some good stuff so. going there. Hopefully, ORBSD will, uh, they'll still kind of keep them in the loop. Is ORBSD involved with IETA? Uh, they're that. the ones that uh, sponsored most of the teacher sessions. They're the ones that brought us out. I did not know that. Yeah. Well, you learn something new all the time. Thanks, Jeremy. Yeah, it was Darren and them that got us out there. So They kind of contracted, I don't know oh, the, the exact OETC, details. Right? What did I say? ORBSD. Oh, sorry, OETC, yeah. Der ORBSD. No, OETC. That's what it is. <laughs> Dang acronyms going on in my head at the moment. <laughs> you were throwing me off there. I was, uh, I was, yeah. No, yeah, it was it was Darren's group. ORVST. Ah, OETC. There we go again. I'm done. We're done talking about this. <laughs> but anyways, IETA, which was in B O I S E, was really I -D. F U N. <laughs> it was. No, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. It was nice. I liked that it was really low key. Um, I, I I like conferences like that. Um, they're more enjoyable for me. I don't feel as overwhelmed by all the boat show and and whatnot that goes on at those conferences that are just focused primarily on paid sponsors. So yeah. Uh, did you uh, did you walk away wanting your Captain and Tennille hat? <laughs> no. Oh, that was funny. And if anybody was listening and they're wondering what we're talking about, feel free to DM us and we'll yeah, we'll explain. Or just go to IETA's website and yeah, that's true. That'll do it too. You'll see what their theme was. We'll just say they played the SpongeBob theme song a few times. More than once. Yes. Very good. No, but how are things up north? Good. Up things are good. Other than rainy. Uh, well, now that the snow's gone, we're back to rain. We can deal with rain. Yeah. But the snow was pretty awesome. Yeah, the rain came and washed all the snow away. I, I wasn't too uh, sad about that. So. But work's pretty good. Keeping busy up here, doing our thing. Uh, lots of districts doing lots of fun stuff. So keeping busy. Um, yeah. That's about it. Getting ready for all the conferences that are coming up, but we'll get yeah. we'll get to that later on. Um, how are your how's the iPad rollout going? It's going really good. Um, it really is. I mean, we've got a lot of folks that are um, kind of jumping on and and seeing some of the benefits. And uh, yeah, I mean, I posted an article in the show notes um, about some schools back east. And I captioned it, iPads don't increase test scores, get out. So what it talks about is, is how iPads aren't in increasing test scores, but when you continue to read, um, it's an overwhelming positive feedback from the community, from the students, from teachers, and that it's increasing a lot of other things now that, you know, obviously are predictors um, things that will increase, you know, what some bottom line is, which is future test scores. Um, so it's it's interesting to see. Unfortunately, that's what it comes down to is if these things increase test scores or not. But um, some of the things they're talking about, I mean, there's even a, 
a quote. Let me bring the article up. Um, I've got it here. I can screen share. Uh, I just, there's a certain part of it I wanted to read, and it's and it's kind of kind of the whole intent behind technology. Really, it's not to increase test scores. It's not to, you know, sure engagement is a huge part of it, but that's really not our ultimate goal. Um, but a teacher is quoted here as saying. You know, and I would love to make I would love to have this verified that this is truly authentic and it wasn't planted here, but it says I have become more of a facilitator of learning rather than a teacher. It's a shift in how we approach instruction. It's a shift in how we were taught to teach. I thought that was really cool. Um, that you know, that can the teachers are coming to those conclusions that, you know, I'm I'm not meant to be the person that stands in front of the room anymore and just and spews forth knowledge. But I'm just someone that's there to ask questions and guide students through, you know, inquiry and exploration and and understanding the content that they're supposed to be learning. So I thought that was kind of insightful. So it's a nice little write up on some school districts back east, kind of the Carolinas area. And you know, none of this stuff is perfect. We're not going to have a silver bullet. You know, I've been seeing even more now. Uh, yeah. Chromebooks are better, iPads are better, and just stuff like that. And I could really care less what they have to say because. There's so many positives for everything, and you know, let's just get a device in students' hands and get them some connectivity and some decent broadband. Um, yeah, and I think we're good to go because there's so many things out there that they have access to if we just put it in their hands. And so, um, no, it's going really well. We've got students enjoying it. We're dealing with broken iPads or factory or you know warranty issues, stuff like that. But that's going to happen and. This first year, you know, I think we see, we'll see a little more of it than we will later on down the road. But I think that's what that's what you're going to have if any device is going home. And if we sent Chromebooks home, if yeah. we sent laptops home, we're going to have kids that lose keys. We're going to have kids that crack screens. We're going to have kids, you know, those kinds of things. So um, it'll come with time. And yeah. but I think it's definitely overall a huge positive. Um, it's funny because when I tell people about it, they they kind of chuckle and say, "Oh, you're that guy." I'm like, yeah, you know, I am one of those guys. Yeah, and, and they begin to, like I had a nurse today at the doctor's office try to explain why she didn't want her kids to have them. And she said, well, the kids can't even go to the library and check out a book anymore. And I said, no, they can check it out on their iPad. They searched on, well, what if they had to check it out at the library? I said, there's computers at the library. I don't use a card catalog anymore. Yeah. Most libraries aren't even organized. You know, most school libraries aren't even organized by the Dewey Decimal System anymore. It's organized by genre and theme, like a bookstore yeah. is, because that's yep. what we that need. works. We don't need a Dewey Decimal System. We don't need call numbers on these books like we used to have. I mean, we still have call numbers to help us find them to identify them, but it's not organized like they used to be. And I said, and I looked at it, and I said, Would you rather invest twelve hundred dollars in an in a encyclopedia that's gonna be out of date within just a few months? Or actually the day after you buy it? <laughs> um, the day or, after it was printed. Yeah, the day after it was printed, there you go. Or would you rather invest twelve hundred dollars in two devices that or three devices, four devices you can put into your home for each of your kids that will always be up to date with information? Um, and she's like, yeah, that's a good point. So, you know, putting giving them that kind of perspective of why we're doing this. It's not just for the apps. It's not just for increased engagement, but it's to provide our kids with access all the time. And that's what we're really pushing for in our district is access all the time. So, um, no, it's going well. Yeah, I, so some of the things you kind of were brought, mentioned there, broached or whatever. Um, I'm working with a district now, just started working with them, and one of the concerns they're rolling out some Chromebooks and they're kind of getting ready for some pushback from parents on too much screen time and stuff. Mm -hmm. and I'm kind of the, yeah. Well, here's know. my, here's my back to that. Um, is how much screen time do they already have? Yeah. Are they worried about increased screen time on top of what they're already allowed? Because I mean, most of the kids where parents mentioned that to me, they've already got a phone or some sort of video game system, whether it's portable or not, at home, and they're on that all afternoon anyway. I'm just giving them a screen now that they can do something a little bit more productive. I mean, I'm not saying all gaming is bad, but, sure. you know, 
we're trying to help them be a little more productive with this, so I don't know. Nice. I'll have to keep that in mind. Yeah, I, like my, I always just ask them, I say, are you concerned about increased screen time in addition to what they already have, or are you just worried about increased screen time because you don't allow it at home? And so, you know, I try and break it down. And Well, they're not going to go outside and play anymore. That was funny. That was on a newscast. A mom was I heard concerned. that. She said, well, my kids won't go outside and play anymore. And I said, no, you just be a parent and take the device and put it away and say, go play outside. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. How's it going, Jamie? It's going good. How are you guys? We're good. good. Are you outside? No, I'm in a corner of the room. Ah. It's just very dark. So you can see the... There's two sets of the walls here. So. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry about me. I'm, in, I'm indoors, Sean. Just, you know, I got to worry about you, man. I know, brother. So are we going to see you in a, in, in a week? Or so. I will be there. Planning. Nice. Yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to it. It's going to be a good week. Yeah. Are you coming up Wednesday, Jeremy, or, or I'm sorry, Jamie, or just Thursday, Friday? Uh, I have that all-day training on Wednesday, but I plan to be there Wednesday evening. Yeah. And then Thursday, Friday. Thursday, Friday. Awesome. Very good. Jamie's been holding down two hats the last couple of days because, um, well, at least two hats. <laughs> two but, hats. Uh, at least two. He's been teaching art as well as doing a, uh, a BYOD enrichment program kind of thing. Oh, nice. Yep. Um, I would love to say it was a huge success. And man, I really how's that going? Oh, sorry, man. Went okay. To, I I had a thing today, so I actually had to cancel. But uh, the last couple times, it's been okay. They uh, it's interesting that you you mentioned the quality screen time versus you know it's kind of they are more happy to just sit there and you give them a task, and that's kind of what we're learning is you give them a task and teach them a tool as opposed to this hugangious realm of ideas and and they're more more apt to uh, get something out of it so you know we've just been adding to the original one which was the getting a picture and making a message using the fonto and and so they just I let them just go kind of independent and crazy and and I think they got a lot out of it so Yeah, I mean, when iPads first went home in some of our elementary schools, our, our principals created kind of like a fun, like here's something to do at home, you know, this week. Don't They actually didn't have the kids bring back the iPads for the first week. They were actually asked to keep them at home. And so some of the principals just said, you know, here's some things to do at home. Become familiar with the iPad. Have fun on it. You know, it's not always just for schoolwork. You know, schoolwork, learning isn't just always schoolwork. You know, learning goes beyond what we do in the classroom. And so they kind of gave some things, you know, like explore your house, take a picture of this, and, and you know, all these different things. And it was really cool. And so then when they came back, they had all this content already on their device. So if the teacher needed to call on something and say, hey, we need to do this, you know, the kids already had stuff on their iPad that they had already made, taken pictures of, movies, whatever, drawings, whatever it was, that was just on hand. So I thought that was really cool, very innovative of a lot of our That's schools. very to, strategic. To kind of start with that. And it was stuff the kids wanted to do. I mean, it was like, take a picture, take a video of you and your sister dancing to your favorite song, or, you know, be silly in a picture with your parents. You know, stuff like that, that just right. kids being kids. And it just gave them an opportunity to get to know the device, and parents became comfortable with it. And it was, I was, I was really impressed that these schools had come up with that idea, so. That's a really good idea. I like that a lot. Yeah, so it's been going good. It's, uh, you know, I think tomorrow we're going to try Haiku Deck. Nice. So that'll be it fun. They just released uh, an iPhone version of their app. You can, con you can, not only can you edit your decks and everything, but you can now control your slides yeah. on another device with the iPhone app. Ooh, that's nice. So it's that kind of a nice, cool. nice remote. Unfortunately, it's not out for Android, but life goes on. Yeah. For some of so. it. But uh, it's going good. Cool. Very good. So you loaded up the dock with tons of 
ideas and stuff. Jeremy, what's Bulb all about? So Bulb, um, hat tip to John Samuelson's iPad Sammy. Um, it's a, it's kind of a cool app. Um, let me screen share real quick. I've got to find what, which browser it's on. I've got like four screens and... Oh, geez. Did I close it? Um, anyway, Bulb is a, it's kind of a curation tool. You know, it's another hmm. curation tool. But I really like the feel of it, look and feel of it. Um, really? I'm not finding it, so I'm not going to worry about it. Anyway, um, and you kind of you create groups, and within the groups you create pages, and it's just a nice little clean way, and then you can publish the groups and stuff. And so they've already got some examples of like student portfolio and student work like that being created into one of these groups and then publishing the group as a kind of a final product. Um, it's in beta right now, and they want everybody to go in and sign up, and they've got this really cool, like right now their support isn't even uh, like real help documents because it's pretty cut and dry how to use Bulb. Um, so it's things that, it's just comments. You say, I would like to see Bulb do this, or I think you guys should do this, and so they're really open to the customer's feedback, which I think is really cool. So if you click to that, take a look right there, Sean. Um, it kind of gives you the idea of what it is. Um, I'll just go back. Um, but right there on that, take a look. You create these pages and put these pages into g collections or groups, and then you share them. And so, I mean, it's pretty basic. It's nothing revolutionary. Um, but I just like the platform. I like the way it looks. It's clean. It's simple. Not a whole lot of bells and whistles, so I'm hoping actually um, some resources I'm making for I'd accelerate for, that. Um, for accelerate at IPDX. I'm hoping to use Bulb to create kind of my uh, resource list for for attendees. So very clean. You can see how it looks. You know, just kind of. And when you click on one of those, if you click on that one, doesn't matter. Um, it's got images and text and stuff, and so kids can curate lessons and or not lessons, but content and resources and stuff into these pages. And, Very uh, cool. So yeah, it's pretty slick. Um, iPad Sammy was talking about it the other day, and I went in, signed up. The Yoda, the origami Yoda also kind of enticed me, so... Sure. You know, it's hard to ignore that. But yeah, that's bold. So check it out. I know it's just one more tool, but who knows? You never know when it has the potential to be something pretty... Uh, Pretty awesome. I like it. It seems pretty like you said. Just yeah. To you sign up for it after the show. Yep. So that's that. What else did I put in there? Um, let me open a document. So that's bulb. Jamie's being very quiet, which makes he me moved. think he's hatching to use this tomorrow. He's in a yeah, different place I now. Was... No, I was uh, putting my son to bed, and now I am down on my other hole of the earth. So, <laughs> yay, I'm back! But that looks cool. I like that. <laughs> so then, the other two things I posted were a couple sites of visual writing prompts. So John Spencer has one called Visual Prompts. It used to be a Tumblr. He's moved it to visually because most yeah. school districts, yeah. their filters block Tumblr because of the adult content that rampantly flows through Tumblr, unfortunately, uh, for some of our, you know, for yep. most of us who don't want to see that at school. Um, he It's just a Weebly site now that he has called visualprompts.weebly.com. And it's really nice. It's really clean. You just click through the arrows. And what he's done here is he's not only has he done the prompt and a way to download the actual image, He's given tags like genre, subject area, age group, topics, um, photo credits if he needs to do that. But then he also has an explanation of the prompt. And then he's got vocabulary explanation from each prompt as well. Yeah, so he's really that. jumped into the language development piece of it, which is I think is really great because now you can use this on you know with multiple levels of students because that vocabulary piece is there as well. Um, so... I like what he's done. It's very Definitely. nice. And then we've got our local Oregonian friend, Luke Neff. Have you met Luke before? 
I haven't met him yet. Um, I'm not sure if he'll be at uh, Integrated, but he's a pretty cool guy. I met him at the Oats Conference uh, this year. And he has one called Writing Prompts. And his is is it is a... Still Tumblr, going with right? the Tumblr. Yeah. Um, but I think he's a secondary teacher, so it's a little easier to have his kids navigate. I don't know if it's not blocked by his district or what. But um, again, really nice images. His often tend to be a little more text heavy, I've noticed. Um, but he's got some really cool ideas. Like there's one prompt where That's great. there's a let's see, let me screen share so I can show this one. This one's really cool. So if you look here, you've got kind of that sequencing. Um, that tells these fairy tales, and uh, you know it's a running problem. He's reading Gatsby right now. Well, he's reading Gatsby now. But I'm, if you look at my screen there, there's one where they kind of make these equations using characters from the fairy tale to tell the story. Yeah. And it's really cool. And I, you know, I've never thought of retelling another story using pictures and math formulas. I mean, talk about if you want to see if kids understand mathematical concepts or mathematical fluency, have them That's tell a story awesome. that doesn't require numbers. I mean, that's that's some deep thinking. That's some deep learning. That's some really rich that is really understanding good. if you can do that. So um, so definitely pushing thinking to, you know, really good levels. So I think he's doing awesome with that. But, Those are pretty uh, fantastic. Yeah. I like Luke's stuff. I like John's stuff. Um, they're all good. Wow. You really, like, you took a break, and then you're coming back strong today. <laughs> well, I've, I've, for all these sessions and stuff, I'm always looking for a bunch of stuff out there. and I've got, I actually have probably another 40 or 50 tabs that I haven't, the only reason this stuff's on here today is because this is what was in front of me. I've got another <laughs> 40 or 50 tabs that I, uh, one tabbed, that I need to go back and go through again. Through yeah, so, but yeah. So to continue down my laundry list of things, so I know, Sean, you, you have a Chromecast, don't you? Yeah, love it. Well, there is a developer out there that has a, an app called Allcast that mm -hmm. supposedly allows you to stream your Android device to, through your Chromecast. So there is. Yeah, I've heard a, about this, but I haven't tried it yet. I haven't either because I don't have a Chromecast. So I'm, you know, although thirty dollars for one isn't all that much, but I always ask my wife for thirty dollars here and thirty dollars there, and it adds up. And so I can only ask <laughs> for so much. Um, I might so, have an extra one if you remind me next week. I will remind you. Bring me one so I can borrow it. Um, but that's pretty cool because a lot of districts are going with. Google tablets just because of affordability initially. Um, so I mean things like the Nexus 7. I know uh, our friends from Montana, um, Dean and oh, he's gonna kill me for not remembering his name. <laughs> I'm in trouble. Anyway, um, those guys are doing a lot with Google products. Yeah. And so they were looking for a way to to stream their Android devices up on the screen. And so if you've got a Chromecast. I mean, you could easily plug that into a, uh, you know, most projectors, most modern projectors that are yeah, newer projectors to have that. So, um, so that's pretty cool. So that's just throwing that out there. If you're if you've got a Chromecast and an Android device, or if you've got those things in your classroom, there is a potential method for you. So the next two, I already talked about the iPads, but the one below it. Uh, paperless stories. So I really like Evernote. I'm really into Evernote right now, especially with the pistachio stuff yeah. and just some of the stuff I'm playing around in there. Um, so I check Evernote's blog every now and then I get their emails. But I really like this one article. Um, I'll go ahead and, and share the screen. And it's called Paperless Stories, Hollywood Inspiration Anywhere. And, you know, I'm not, you know, saying our kids need to go out and 
become Hollywood movie makers or anything like this, but it is just a Hollywood composer, sure. Mark Yeager, um, does cool stuff in Hollywood, obviously. But what he does is he uses Evernote to capture everything. So he talks about, you know, anytime he's in the car and he hears a song or he hears a rhythm or a beat, um, if it comes to his head, you know, he'll just he'll play it out with his hands and record the sound, you know, or take a picture of whatever it was. And so all the inspiration that he finds around him, he's got a notebook for different things. And he just captures it, you know. He doesn't wait, he doesn't think I'm going to remember it later, and he captures it. And I think getting students into the habit of capturing their ideas when they happen, That's pretty awesome. I think is, is really powerful. And I don't care what tool they use, you know. Um, I don't care what device it is. But the idea behind this, that inspiration is everywhere or mm -hmm. anywhere, is really, really cool and really empowering for our students. And, you know, and if that's the minimum that we're doing with our students and the devices, I think we're doing far more with that than we would by converting worksheets to PDFs and having them fill out the worksheets. Oh, goodness, yeah. You know, to get kids conscious of their surroundings and, you know, it's that whole metacognition thing. Think about your thinking. Get them to think about what they're thinking and that inspiration when it hits. Because, you know, we all have these little epiphanies and we think, oh, yeah, I'm going to get to that. I do it all the time. Never. And then later in the day, I'm thinking, crap, what was that? And I don't remember. And I feel really bad because it could have been something worth sharing. And so, yeah, so that's definitely uh, uh, an article worth reading. Um, I've got a couple other cool ones, but, again, they're not. Uh, um, hey, Jeremy, can you share that on Google Plus? That yeah, the article, yeah, I'll just throw just on Google Plus itself, yeah, for yeah. sure. <clears throat> yeah, I think actually I may have originally seen it on Google Plus um, not too long ago. Um, I closed my window up because it was Google Plus for really odd reason was doing some weird things. Um, but yeah, for sure, I'll throw it up there right now. <laughs> but that's it. I mean, that's just a lot of stuff that's in front of me right now. Like I said, I've got 40 or 50 tabs that I one tabbed earlier last week that I need to go through and sort yeah, through again. And I'll share a lot of that next week. And we're not going to cover it. Like, I don't expect you to share and talk about it, but <laughs> that's a pretty awesome album that you added in the show notes. Oh, have you listened to Bastille? I've listened to... Or not, Bastille? I don't think I could say most of it, but I've listened to probably half of it. So Pompeii is like his song right now. That's like yeah. the, the one that's on the radio. But listen to the whole album. I mean, if you yep. grew up at any point in the 80s, it's a huge throwback to <laughs> 80s pop. You know, it, you've got a lot of that kind of Depeche Mode, Pet Shop Boys, yeah. kind of that more upbeat, you know, not all their depressing stuff that they were known for as well, um, but a lot of that upbeat 80s uh, British pop. But then with that kind of mixed in with that, you know, today's kind of more dance hall kind of uh, beats like that. I, I It's a really? fun album. It really is. It's just fun. I listen to it during the day, and uh, it just kind of keeps me upbeat and going, so check that out. That's just for fun. That's an awesome share. We all need a little fun. Yeah. Definitely. So what do you guys and, have to share? Um, so Accelerate is coming up. Woohoo! That's going to be awesome. I've got uh, one workshop there. Are you... Working that day, Jeremy? I am. I'm just doing one in the afternoon on productivity. So I've got some ideas on that. Just kind of uh, going to help administrators look at ways to find tools that help them do the things they do. So kind of I've picked different parts of an administrator's day. And I'm just going to you know share some tips. You know, I shared that Gmail hack with you. Yeah. Do you remember that, how to organize your inbox? Mm -hmm. So, you know, things like that, you know, G email's a big part of their day. So how do you organize an inbox that makes you more productive? Um, and then using free tools like Evernote or Google Drive and stuff like that for doing their observations and notes and collabor collaboration and meetings, you know, and, and how do we, and the idea also is to how do we make our meeting times more productive? Because I'd say 90% of most meetings are things that should have been yeah. read in the email. 
And so, you know, talking about things like that. You know, if, if we're having these meetings for 30 minutes, those 30 minutes need to be really, really insightful or really informative. I guess insightful isn't the right word. It should be really informative and things that needed to go further than an email could allow. But all that stuff that could have been said in an email should be put in an email and expected to be read. So things like that, just helping administrators harness the, the you know, the technologies they have and let it amplify their work so that they... Don't work harder, but work smarter. That old cliche. It, it's a cliche, but it's good. It is. That's what I'm trying to learn. Jamie, what do you got to share? You're just smiling, man. I am. I, I was just going to kick out all those things that uh, you were just going through and I can check a couple of those off. Very good. I don't even have to go to Accelerate now. I got Jeremy. There you go, man. <laughs> so, no, I, I I agree. That's one of the things that we've we've done. You know, in Dallas, or we've gone to a breakthrough coach model. Have you heard of that? A breakthrough coach? Uh-uh, I've never heard of that. Yeah, it's a it's more of a business model, but it is taking. Uh, the secretary and giving them a little bit more of a role, especially in the lives of an uh, administrator. So I have one of the best uh, secretaries in the world. And, She's pretty uh, awesome. She helps. Uh, she is my calendar keeper, my uh, filter, my organizer, and I know you can't get everybody one of those, but I would recommend something like that. So. Um, but for my for my own sanity, the Evernote has been one of the one of the, my favorite tools. Um, I was telling Sean I got in trouble at one of my admin meetings because we're not supposed to have devices out because they're distractors and and I kind of started breaking some rules because I was using Evernote and I use Evernote to take my notes, my list of things to do, and by the time I'm back to the office, I. I've already emailed that to Alice, and she knows exactly what I'm supposed to be doing that day, and she lines things out for me. So, no, I, I think any, any little small trick to help us get organized is, is great. So, appreciate that. Cool. And that's all I have to share. It's not <laughs> I, I have never had a secretary, so I sometimes I'm jealous. So. You yeah. Another time, I'm thinking, man, that's like donuts and drinks and like treats and flowers. I got to bring all the time. It would I, be I, so worth it to have. I have a wife. Have her help I, you. I already out, fall though. behind with that. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty amazing. She's great. That's awesome. Though. And that that accelerated. It's on Wednesday. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's too bad I have that other useful conference thing. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll share my notes with you from my afternoon session. And actually, that's maybe something we should talk about doing for the next uh, enrichment round is I want to get going with the maker movement, which is kind of a theme for the whole IPBX thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. And we have, like, the maker guys there. That's what's yeah. Cool. It's going to be great. Except the accelerate session is my maker movement is at the exact same time as the actual maker people. Oh. That, when is that? that? Be a bit of, is that in the morning or in the afternoon? In the afternoon. Oh, at accelerate. Bad. Like in yeah. the one to three o'clock session or whatever. Yeah. Punch I might. Face. I think I'll need to me message Darren on that one. Yeah, I, to be honest, I want the one-year free subscription to Make Magazine. I just need somebody to go put my name in. Uh, I think so it's, only, it's only like four issues a year, but those, those magazines are worth their weight in gold. Totally. And then the next two days are going to be um, integrated. It's going to be awesome. Awesome. And you're going to be here for that, Jamie, and some of your teachers will be here for that, which is going to be awesome. Yeah, I think it's going to be um, 
it'll be good to have some uh, more eyes on things and someone else I can talk about some of the cool things that go on there. So I think it's going to be good. And then Jeremy's going to be in Seattle for NCCE. I am. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Um, it'll be fun. It's uh, a little different than kind of what happens at IPX and kind of a bigger scale than what happens at IETA. Uh, but yeah, it's it's. And they just got is is Virginia working with them? She is on their board, I believe now. Yeah, like their board of something or trustees or something. So that's plan. good. I mean, they could really she could yes share some good ideas good. with them and. Oh yeah, totally agree. Um, yeah, she was actually nominated last year, I believe. Um, I think I had a little button that said "Vote for Virginia." I did. Yeah, you did too. Yeah, we. All, I think we all had one out there. Um, also, I'm think. Uh, what was I thinking? They're also doing a big maker thing this year as well, and they actually have. Uh, what's his name? And there's going to be a maker space at IPDX. There is. The whole oh, room they're dedicating to it. At IPDX or NCC? At IPDX. I'm sorry, I went back to IPDX. No, there'll also be one at NCCE. It's uh, Gary Steger and Sylvia. Oh, really? What's her name? Uh, Sylvia Martinez. Yes. I believe they're married now. Is that am I mistaken? Right. Or maybe they're wanted, a yeah. couple, an official they're, couple. Yeah. I don't know. But um, yeah, actually, Sylvia will be man. It will be kind of the main person at the the makerspace, and Gary's one of the keynotes. Along that with will Eric, be worth going to Eric Schinniger. So, yeah, it'll be interesting. That'll be I, very I, good. Gary was at one of the very first IPDX. Well, when it was still ITSC ITSC that I went to, and um, he's an opinionated man, and he's got some really good ideas. And yes, he you is. can learn a lot from him if you just don't take anything personal. Yeah. So. Yeah. Gary's got some great ideas. He does. He's definitely, in my opinion, he's definitely more. I, I, I prefer his keynotes than to his sessions. Yeah. Um, he's kind of he's good in bits. You know, you don't want a lot of Gary at once. <laughs> and <laughs> no. I'm not and I'm not saying this in any bad way either. I'm just saying Gary has an at, has a personality that just rubs certain people that runs yeah. probably most people wrong. Um, so if you kind of just take him in bits and pieces, he's got some really great things that he to share and. So I'm sure he'll have his book and stuff there, which I've got, and and uh, I've always picked through. It's got good ideas for bringing the maker ideas into your classroom and into your school. So uh, I'm excited to meet Sylvia. I've met Gary before, but it'll be nice to meet Sylvia and uh, kind of see what they're doing. So yeah, yeah, very good. Uh, the last two links I put in there is EdCamp Mid Valley and the One to One Summit. Unfortunately, going to be on the same day. Ooh. Yeah, it's a bummer. There was some last minute. Uh, the one one summit was kind of a last minute thing, and unfortunately, like two days before, Ed Camp Mid Valley had some issues and had to switch dates. So they're both on April fifth. Ed Camp Mid Valley is going to be down in Salem at Battle Creek, and then um, the one one summit is going to be. North here at Jesuit, I believe, Jesuit High School. So who's here. doing the one-to-one -one summit? Um, OATC is working with Jesuit to put it together. Oh, nice. I think OATC is. I don't know. I I. Talk. Well, the link you put posted was posted by Jin, so. Yeah, that's what made me think that OATC is in on it now. Cool. Um, but yeah, so. It's going to be good. The, they're both going to be great events and cheap and local to, you know, pretty much everyone in on this side of the state. Sorry, Jeremy. That's all right. I'll, I'm going to call Jen and see. Um, I don't know. I've always wanted. I've always wanted to talk to more people. They're doing one to one and share kind of the stuff we're doing. 
because, you know, again, while what our district hasn't done is perfect in all cases, but I think we've done a pretty good job. I'm going to toot my own horn on that because I think there's, we've put a lot of thought into some of the things we're doing and and some of the stuff's worth sharing, but also the, the hiccups and the, the mistakes that we've made is also worth sharing so people don't make those same mistakes. Definitely, definitely worth sharing. So, yeah, I'm going to get a hold of Jen on that one and see if she wants any input on that. Cool. Well, very good, gentlemen. We ran out of notes. Works for me. Oh, crap. All right. Then, um, so next week, I will actually be driving up. Sound good? I will actually be driving up to Portland that, that evening. Oh. So. Oh. Yeah, because I've got to be there Wednesday morning. Yeah. So I'll let you know. I mean, heck, we could have a live show and, and be, uh, fun. be eating somewhere. Hey, I can do that. You know, so. Maybe yeah. Jeremy or Jamie will be around. I will probably be around. All right. Be awesome. For sure. It was good to see you guys. Yeah. All right, then. Thanks, Jamie. We'll stop the broadcast. And thanks for making time. Thanks for talking. Good night.